Okay, good afternoon. Um, our lecture starts uh, the second lecture. Um, this morning, actually, Philip already gave a very comprehensive introduction on how to evaluate uh, how to optimize uh, the tensor level of function. So actually, I found there, uh, realized that not much really I can talk about. Uh, so I just cut her my uh, throw away quite a lot of my lecture notes. Um, but I still want to just emphasize uh, some points which uh, maybe hasn't been uh, emphasized in this talk. So I will talk about uh, mainly the how to handle the refunction, the perhaps or perhaps like refunction. Um, so this is um, as I mentioned yesterday, the tensor network space can be also regarded as uh, answers, version answers for the, for the function, the right? function. Uh, in general, if we, uh, we have our states, uh, quantum mega states, this should be a function of, uh, uh, this is a very big, a uh, uh, function defining very big phase uh, space. If uh, each and each side has deep degrees of freedom, then the total degrees of freedom is equal to the power L. So this is the total number of parameters. Then the MPS uh, is to compose this wave function as a tensor tray, okay? That's a matrix product, okay? So in that, by doing this, so the number of parameters is reduced then it increases just linearly with system size instead of exponential, it goes exponential. So this is a very different, there's a difference between um, master plus state and rigorous uh, function. But it turns out that if the ground state is uh, gapped, then this provides a very accurate uh, approximation to ground state. This is also the wave function generated by DMRG. So, of course, in DMRG calculation, generally uh, people don't use this kind of wave function, but uh, if we really ask what kind of wave function generated by DMRG, it is just this kind of this type of wave function. This wave function is also an exact solution of the so called AKRT valence bound solid state. For example, for spin one, uh, Heisenberg model with by quadratic, by, 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 uh, by quadratic terms, then the ground state is actually a uh, valence bound solid state. Uh, this state is constructed by fractionize a spin one, a physical variable, into two spin one half uh, objects. Then this is a spin one, then if I very fractionize into two spin one half. Um, one of the spin one half uh, spin will form a single atom with uh, its nearest neighboring size. Another spin one half, they will form a single atom. Then the ground state turns out uh, to be just this kind of single atom uh, when it's bound solid states. Then the function can be generally expressed as this way. Because now the physical degrees of freedom has three uh, uh, numbers. You can take uh, either down spin, or zero spin, or up spin. Then this is our two by two matrix. So this is our exact refunction of this, of ground state for this component. Um, so this is very simple. And this refunction also have not of degrees of freedom, are uh, wrong, redundant degrees of freedom. Because uh, if you do a gauge transformation, then this, is, this, ten, this matrix for that state is unchanged. So the definition of this local matrix is not fixed. That's a gauge degrees of freedom to define as a matrix. So you may get the same answer but using different uh, A matrix. Here, this is uh, also by doing this kind of gauge transformation, also keeps the 
translation invariance. <laughs> Um, you can also understand MPS as the projection of 2D tensor network states. This is a classical model. If it cuts the system into the, from the middle of the lattice, then do the projection onto this side and this side, so you get uh, the ground state function bra and a cat. So this is uh, another way to understand what is MPS. MPS is just to do this projection. Of course, when you do the projection, the, the bumper degrees of freedom here will increase exponentially with the number of layers you project onto the, the bottom layers. So you have to cut it, the bump cut it. But cutting, that actually introduce uh, uh, the approximation. So also, because it's cutting, then the, this originally each tensor defined on each vertex, uh, there's no free parameter here, but here there's we re, can have another degrees of freedom to determine what is the optimized uh, cutting of truncation. So that work actually gives you the freedom to determine its AI by different kind of methods. DMRG is one of the thing. Okay, you can also use other methods like uh, IGVD, and there's a time of evolution, but we just use the Hamiltonian uh, optimization, just minimize the ground the energy. So, this is another way. Uh, of course, this can be extended. Uh, oh, you can also, because in literature, also quite many people discuss about. Uh, uh, matching for the operator, you can also define the eigen operator for the ground state. You can also determine this eigen operator. Um, so this is uh, another way to treat a uh, uh, quantum system. Instead of finding the ground state with function, you find the ground state eigen operator. But uh, this will not give you much benefit in real calculation. Because in the real ground state, this uh, um, eigen operator can in principle be factorized into two decoupled matrix polar states. So the bound dimension here is if it is a d squared, then this is the issue is d. Okay, this is in, roughly speaking, this is correct. In the limit of bound dimension goes to infinity. So instead of treating this one, it's much easier to treat uh, real function rather than the eigen operator. So this is uh, otherwise you may say whether this could come in just gain the, uh, some efficiency in calculation by treating directly the uh, eigen operator rather than uh, eigen states. Uh, the simple answer is no, because uh, uh, just because of these properties. Now let's go to two dimension. Of course, uh, you already heard a lot of about this uh, pep wave function because this is uh, emphasize that it is a pair correlation function. Okay, emphasize that on the nearest neighboring uh, entanglement between two any two light sides. Um, so. Um, i skip this because this will be working not as quite well. Um, actually, this kind of a function first proposed by the German scientists in 90, uh, mid 1990s. And in that case, they didn't call the PEPs, they just called the tensor product states. Um, the bound dimension they, they wrote down is also very small, just the equal to two. But they do have this kind of Okay. Um, later, um, Sarah and uh, Martin Tagodo um, also just uh, propose this, just slightly generalize this one to discuss about how to use this kind of a function to solve our physical Heisman model. Um, later, Nishino and his collaborators also uh, use this kind of a function to 
to do the rational calculations. But uh, it is until uh, 2004, then, uh, when Mercer and Schreck published a paper, that we realized that, well, actually, they pointed out that this kind of a function satisfies the error rule. So this is making this uh, kind of a function uh, a very general expression for the uh, many body systems. So this is, uh, I think, so only after the, their work that people become more seriously to, to study this kind of functions. And uh, it's similar to the Maxwell state, the PEPS wave function is also an uh, executive transmutation of the so called well response solid state, but not in two dimensions. In two dimension, um, we can construct, also construct an exact soluble model, which is a when, whose ground state is a well response solid state. For example, on square lattice, we can define a, a spin 2 uh, Heisenberg or generalized the Heisenberg model. Um, so that uh, um, also you can fractionize the spin 2 uh, object into four spin 1 half objects. So this is a fractionization. Then also, like the one of the uh, half spin to form a spin singularity with one of the nearest neighboring, uh, another spin on half on the nearest neighboring side. So they form uh, just a singlet. Now if we're uh, all spin from spin singlet, then the ground state can be expressed uh, in this way. Okay, I will not write down the formula for this uh, uh, T-match, uh, T-tensor. It is very easy to to, to write down the expression using the boson implantation. Um, the Hamiltonian in this case is actually a projection operator. It's, uh, uh, it's just a uh, two spin half, uh, two spin two spins. They can form a, a either a total spin be equal to four or three, two, one, and zero. Then this projection operator is just say just project out all the spins, the total spin on two sides, total spin equal to four. Okay, so that's the Hamiltonian. Um, similarly, you can construct a, this kind of state in other kind of symmetries, you know, other kind of spin systems. So. Um, then we ask uh, what kind of properties of this uh, perhaps we function can have. Um, because uh, for any finite dimension of a bundle dimension, um, the correlation is a very short range. Correlation is a very short range. So um, if a system is gapped, then this is a good uh, This uh, function can convert quite quickly. So if the system is gapped generally, you show, for example, the constant energy should show exponential decay with or convergence with a bound dimension. Otherwise, if the system is gapless, doesn't matter if it's a point or contact or point nodes or just a continuous firm surface, then you show some kind of power law dependence on the bound dimension. So this is a, a, one of the properties one can read out from the quantum dimension dependence how the system is gapped or not gapped. Is there any proof? No, no proof. Oh, I think this is just a belief. Because uh, at any final bound dimension, generally uh, the correlation is a short range. If it's a gap mass, the correlation is sure. Should they work? That's the only. If I'm saying this is proof, then this is only a partial uh, picture for how to understand this from dimension. Then, uh, given uh, uh, perhaps representation, 
then what we need to do uh, is first, of course, to determine those lo local tensors by whatever the means. For example, the, old, um, the, the method introduced uh, this morning by Philip, and he actually discussed a lot of about this uh, how to determine this tensor. <coughs> okay. I will also just uh, discuss this briefly. Um, after we obtain this uh, local tensor, then the second thing we need to do is to evaluate this citation uh, value using the method I discussed uh, yesterday, also discussed by yesterday. Okay, so this is actually uh, what we need to do. Um, just concerning this uh, tensor network of evaluating these expectation values, then let me just uh, briefly discuss about the properties, which is um, very bit different from what I discussed yesterday. Because in this case, in order to, for example, to evaluate the denominator, we need to contract this uh, final state with the initial state. Then they form a uh, uh, just a uh, two-dimensional tensor narrow state, but with uh, bound dimension d squared. So that's the difference. Generally, if d, for example, is 10, then this is a big number, 100. So this is very different from the IC model. In IC model, this is a physical bound is just d equal to 2. But here, it's much, much bigger. The trouble is that if when this, this Bound dimension become large, then doesn't matter what kind of method you use, generally the accuracy decay very fast with the increase of this uh, bound dimension. So, this is uh, one thing you need to pay attention. Because yesterday I showed the results very accurate. You can get an extremely accurate result, for example, for ISIN model. For ISIN model. But here, you may not have that accuracy anymore. Um, in order to use, uh, for example, uh, color transfer matrix or other kind of uh, TRG methods, then we ask how much of the truncation dimension we need. It turns out that in order to get a convergent result, that's the bound dimension, the virtual bound dimension in the, in the, in the TRG or CTMRG, this kind of thing, work method generally is off order this bound dimension. Maybe two, three times more than that, but in uh, generally speaking, it's off order D squared because uh, the dimension here is also D squared. Um, keep this uh, in mind, then we ask how much the cost we, we, we have, we need. Then this is a table I showed you before, but now I just say in order to evaluate uh, the uh, expectation values, how much the cost we have, then generally this is the, uh, the table I have that's given here. Um, here, um, this is a number is a slightly different from what uh, um, Philip showed this morning uh, because I'm more conservative. Uh, he shows this number is 10, right? So that's uh, the only difference. Uh, of course, you can always uh, design the algorithm to reduce this number slightly smaller. But uh, uh, in general, if you just uh, uh, just do this uh, uh, you know, brute force way, then this is a 12. Okay. Um, just say this table. If, it's, if you can reduce this to 10, then in principle, you can also reduce other uh, exponent uh, corresponding. So this is a. Uh, uh, this is because the similar trick can be used here, it can be also used in other, in principle, other methods as well. So um, in this case, these two methods uh, just consider the efficiency, they are not, uh, not uh, significantly much better than other methods, I should say, in this case. Just because the bounded dimension, the, the physical bounded dimension is uh, almost equal, of the same order as the virtual bounded dimension. And that's the difference between uh, the classical ISIN model and the expectation value. 
um, calculations. For square lattice, I still suggest you to use uh, this uh, CTMRG or TEVP, this kind of method. For highly common lattice, I think it's better to use uh, this SRG because uh, that will keep the symmetry of the matrix. Oh, because a uh, uh, polycom or triangle or, uh, or even uh, some lattice that can be uh, converted to a polycom lattice. Um, the other methods are generally uh, very expensive, so I don't suggest you to use it. Um, this method seems to be uh, okay uh, in 2D, but uh, I, we haven't tried this, so I don't know how good it is complete. Uh, the trouble is that so when you do the minimization, version minimization, it may become unstable when the bundle dimension becomes big. So that's the only thing you need to worry about when you use this kind of methods. So, um, so I discussed about the PEPs, and then we also ask whether PEPs is a really a good representation in a frustrated lattice. Um, it turns out that, uh, which is not, the answer is not that simple, so not that simple. Um, let me first basically tell you about your frustrations. Uh, for example, this <coughs> Kagome lattice is a frustrated lattice. The reason is frustrated for is a Heisenberg model, anti Fermat Heisenberg model, because uh, um, you cannot uh, just uh, set an uh, ordered state. If, you, for example, this is uh, two, just consider two sides, they favor an uh, anti parallel spin state. But for the third side, then it's very difficult to choose because uh, you cannot choose uh, a simple direction to satisfy. Uh, uh, to optimize the energy. So this is called geometric frustration. So the triangle lattice, the Kogomi lattice, or even honeycomb, even square lattice with uh, next neighbor, next nearest neighbor coupling also have this kind of frustration. Um, another kind of frustration is quantum frustration. This is uh, still the nearest neighbor intention, but you introduce some kind of uh, uh, frustrating intentions. So this is two kinds of frustrations. In either case, and the frustration actually generally means that the system, more than two body correlations are important. For example, here it is three side correlations or entanglement are very important. Now if you use uh, paths, which actually emphasize on the entanglement between two sides, which may not be the best representation. Then actually for Kagome lattice, then if we use paths, we can also do a calculation. We calculate the ground stability function. It turns out that there's a series cancellation. For example, if we get a paths with function on Kagome lattice, uh, we also Let's just try this just on each triangle. We normalize uh, each tensor defined on vertex so that its maximum tensor element is one, okay? Then now we just uh, contract three tensors on each triangle. Then we ask how big the maximum, element, maximum tensor element it is. Um, in general, it should be of order one. Right, because we already normalized that. But it turns out that number is very small. <clears throat> um, for this uh, uh, calculation, then we found that actually this number, why is 10 to minus 5, 6? I'll show you, right? This is actually due to just brushing error. Okay. Um, Actually, this cancellation also means that <clears throat> this three-body intention or entanglement is very important. Because this function emphasizes just on the two-side entanglement. 
So this I just show you there. This is the dominant tensor elements. If the bond dimension is very small, if two or three, that's okay. It's all for over one. So you can you can get a roughly the answer. Okay, uh, uh, estimation for ground standard, for example. But if, if uh, the bond dimension goes above four or equal to four, even then this number dominant tensor elements is essentially just random number. Okay, so it's a in some cases are very small, some is bigger, but in general is still very small. Okay, this is because this is uh, a this scale. This means that actually the two body entanglement here is not the, not the dominant uh, entanglement we should care about. <coughs> what we really need to care about is more than two body entanglement. So it needs the three body entanglement here. Then this what you ask to define a new kind of uh, tensor analog state. We call the projected entangled simplex state. This simplex, for example, the triangle is the simplex here. So this uh, tensor analog state is very similar to PEPS, but uh, the, we also introduce. Uh, a core time, a simplex tensor, which is defined on each here, on the center of each simplex. Okay? There's no external or physical degrees of freedom associated with this tensor. So this tensor is just an internal tensor, S, A, B, C. Okay? It just measure the entanglement between the three physical sides. Okay? This is a two, this is a, I just, this circle is a, it's just physical. Uh, degrees of freedom. Um, then there's another tensor is defined uh, on each physical side, just on the vertex here, this A. Okay? It is, of course, uh, a function of physical degrees of freedom. So this is a very like uh, uh, just a tensor defined in PEPS. But here it's very simple just because uh, it has a two link, so it's like uh, MPS. It's okay? so just a matrix for us. So this is a, a, a kind of a tensor network, network space. It is defined on the simplex lattice. Okay? This simplex lattice is actually a honeycomb lattice. Okay? If you see this uh, black line, it they form a honeycomb lattice. So by Introduce this kind of representation, we actually convert a uh, frustrated lattice into uh, unfrustrated lattice. Of course, all the frustration is, uh, is, is hidden in the, this kind of representation. So, um, in some sense, by introducing this kind of representation, we can remove the geometry frustration. Okay? At least, uh, uh, just uh, not uh, uh, contain a frustration explicitly in the representation of the wave function. Also, this wave function is uh, cheaper or just uh, cost less than the PEPS wave function. Because in the PEPS wave function, each, uh, each left side has four labels, so there's four virtual index. And now it has only three here, but only two here. So for A matrix, it has only two virtual matrix, or virtual index. For this uh, simplex tensor, it has only three. So this has a nice number of virtual indexes. So of course, this is a kind of safe time in the calculation. Also safe, uh, just memory space. So this is a, a better presentation, uh, at least uh, for the for the study of uh, uh, <coughs> this Kagome system. Again, actually, this kind of a function is also exact representation of uh, standard um, 
rather strong solid state is called simplex solid state. This kind of state was first uh, studied by uh, Aros in 2008. This is a, still give you an example. This is a spin two uh, spin model, S equal to the spin model, which is defined on hard count lattice. On each left side, we have a spin two object. Then we also fractionize this spin two into two spin one spins, S equal to one spins. Then three spin one can form a spin singlet. So on each triangle, this three spin linked by this uh, Y, and uh, this is uh, uh, just a simple tensor, actually they form a single okay. So this is a uh, uh, very like uh, uh, valence bond solid state. In valence bond solid state, generally they have uh, this two form a spin single right? But uh, now it's a three spin one form a spin single okay. So that's the only difference. So this kind of wave function is actually can be also very easily write down. So this is actually a function. Because uh, three spin one were form a singlet, then we can read it out uh, from just the coefficient. This is just defined the core tensor. So that S tensor here is just uh, this uh, coefficient of the, the singlet. So this is uh, basically just an anti-symmetric tensor here. So very simple. Uh, when we can also def read out uh, this uh, the matrix here defined on bond, is actually nothing but the garbage golden coefficients because this is a projection to project uh, two spin one to S equal to one spin into a uh, spin two object. So there's a two spin one into spin two. So that's the. So it's very simple. And or you can also construct a Hamiltonian for this. Uh, again, it's a projected, projection uh, Hamiltonian. Actually, the Hamiltonian is not unique. You can define two kinds of your Hamiltonian. Why is still like uh, the Hamiltonian I showed you before? It's just uh, P4 to project a two spin, neighboring spin onto their four uh, total spin equal to four spin state. Another way is, is to define uh, a more complicated, slightly more complicated. It's instead of just project onto spin of four, I also def define to project uh, on each triangle, the total spin, rule out the, the total spin on each triangle be four, five, six. That's the, another Hamiltonian, uh, which this is uh, defined on each triangle. This is a, just a two side connection. This is a three side connection. So that's the only difference. So this kind of representation, you can also generalize to other kind of lattices. You can choose a simplex and then define uh, a tensor like wave function. Uh, well, of course, you can also generalize uh, to enlarge the simplex. For example, for this uh, Kagome lattice, you can just uh, put two triangle you set this true triangle as one simplex. In this case, uh, the core tensor actually links five sides, five lattice sides. So we call this as our five paths, okay? Because our simplex just connect five lattice sides. Uh, this kind of function actually was uh, uh, was used by Cobalt in his study uh, in 2012. You can also define a uh, uh, study even larger simplex, for example, in this case, three triangles linked by a uh, simplex tensor. In this case, there's nine sides are connected by uh, one simplex tensor here. So we call this a lamp pass. Of course, you can enlarge the size of the simplex. And so this is like a cluster expansion. Okay. Um, this actually also so you can, if you can do very large simplex, then in principle, you can get very accurate results. Uh, this is another way to approach uh, infinity lattice system. Uh, 
Um, of course, this kind of per definition can be extended to other kinds of matrices. For example, you can define a path on triangle matrix. On triangle, in the original path definition, each left side has six neighbors, so then the PEPs, in the PEPs definition, then the local tensor has uh, six virtual indexes. But now you can just define this PEPs with only three neighbors, or three sides, just three virtual sides. It's one, two, three, okay? So this is the uh, distributed work. Uh, maybe it out roughly. How this kind of interpretation can be. Okay, you can also, of course you can always choose other kind of interpretation to make this one. Then in comparison with PEPs, then the tensor is is dramatically reduced. The dimension is dramatically reduced. Here, this is a total parameter is d to times d six, but here is d just cubic, and the d times uh, cubed capital d six uh, cubic. So the cost here is much, much less than this one. So this is, a, uh, in principle, a better way to handle triangle matrix. One can also treat, uh, for example, square matrix, G1J2 model. If it's just G1-only model, you can define uh, 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 perhaps a function just like this one. But if it's G1, G2 with the next nearest neighbor, then you can define a, a path, just pathway function this way. So each time there's a, uh, there's a core tensor on each, uh, on the center of each uh, square, okay? Once you plug it. Then there's another, uh, this, is, this one is very like uh, the pathway function, uh, pathway function, okay? Local tensor, uh, four neighbors. Along the diagonal direction. So this is actually a, a better way of starting point for studying G1, G2, and common in square matrix. Then um, now I move to the discussion on how to determine those uh, kind of functions. Actually, this is a, a, has already been discussed by. Philip this morning, uh, very comprehensively. Uh, so generally, there are two kind of approach, as I already mentioned. One is to do imaginary time evolution. Another is, is to optimize the local tensors by minimizing the ground state energy. So this is two kind of approaches. In the imaginary time evolution, and uh, it's uh, 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 approximate way is to do simple updates. This is uh, because it's very cheap, and uh, the good thing is that uh, the solution obtained from this simple update can be used as the initial proof for the full update and also for the minimization of ground state energy. Um, of course, the full update is, is more greater than the simple update, and this is a uh, even more accurate, as uh, Philip just uh, shared before uh, this morning. I don't really understand why these two things can be so dramatically different, but uh, I think this is an interesting observation. Uh, one thing I think uh, uh, is that uh, because uh, in this form of the optimization, it is the optimized distance of between uh, two-way functions. Uh, but here, this is to minimize the energy itself. So in principle, just con consider the energy, I think it should be better than this one. I should have the same order. Um, I still don't understand why this one is still much better than this one. So this is uh, something uh, I haven't figured out. Uh, the minimization, this kind of approach, actually was uh, uh, first used by Nishino and his collaborators. In, in their uh, calculations. Uh, but the formula we use uh, uh, now in literature is actually the first appear in this paper. Um, okay, this is already discussed by um, 
at Finipo. Uh, so I uh, just here, just a uh, briefly mention that this is actually the better way, for example, to minimize the energy. So of course, this is in principle, if you can do this kind of calculation, then use this kind of method. Okay. The only thing which you may need to consider is that uh, the cost is very high for doing this generally. And the bond dimension is limited by the, uh, by, the, by the time, computer time. Because uh, the real trouble is that to evaluate this, uh, uh, this kind of quantities. <coughs> now I just uh, briefly discuss about uh, the sample update. I just uh, uh, say a little bit more words on sample update. The simple update is actually a uh, mean field approach. It's just to take the entanglement. This is actually not well defined entanglement, which is uh, just a kind of uh, approximately defined entanglement as a uh, mean field to do the calculation. So, but anyway, the, the idea is to take uh, some kind of uh, uh, bound vectors. Uh, we treat this bound vector as kind of some kind of entanglement as a mean field to, to do the calculation. So this is the idea. This kind of approach actually is a rigorous pro, uh, approach in the in, in the in the beta analysis because in the beta analysis there are no loops. Um, this kind of approach actually can work very fast. Okay. Also make the calculation very stable. And then another thing, the good thing is that uh, you can easily treat uh, a bond dimension as much as 100 or even more. So, um, so this, in principle, this kind of approach is very much like DMRG, okay? Because uh, DMRG actually is, uh, you can also think that the DMRG actually is just some, some kind of simple update approach. Because in, in 1D, there's no loop at all. Okay? So this is a 1D is just a special base analysis. So this is actually the, the, the motivation why this uh, kind of uh, simple update uh, approach is proposed. So um, if in the base analysis, or in any kind of analysis without loops, then you can construct uh, its uh, kinetic form. So that's actually important because in one D we can have a kinetic form, but also this is a, you can also define very easily define the kinetic form of beta lattice. For example, if this is an AB sub lattice system you know, defined <coughs> on this beta lattice, then this all lo local tensors must satisfy this uh, uh, kinetic conditions. If it satisfies this condition, then if it does truncation, that's in principle the optimized truncation. So this is why this is work. This kind of method can work. So this is uh, uh, this is definition is just a uh, this tensor of uh, the, the two tensors. And all the T represent a tensor either B or A here. Okay. This is, and this is theta here is just a, is a bound vector defined on each bound. Um, for this, uh, on this beta lattice, this bound vector actually just the single value spectrum or the entanglement spectrum defined on each bound. Okay. Because on beta lattice, you can always count a bound to separate the system into two parts. Then you can always ask about uh, what's the entanglement between these two parts. That's actually the entanglement space on is just this kind of bound vector. So this is a, uh, this is a physical uh, background for using this kind of method to treat uh, uh, to do the calculation. <coughs> um, this is uh, the, the calculation itself is very actually quite uh, straightforward and. We, in order to do this uh, uh, calculation, we generally use imaginary time evolution. And 
to calculate uh, ground stand by, uh, by applying a projection operator on an arbitrary initial wave function. Of course, in real calculation, we need to divide the data into many small uh, steps. So, uh, the, the real calculation, this is done in, uh, in three steps. Because, um, we first apply at least a horizontal bound, then this one, this, and this one. And it's a repeated iteration many, many times. Uh, in the real calculation, of course, uh, we need to consider the contribution of these uh, bundle vectors. So this is the only difference. And the first step is to, to apply this uh, a horizontal this, uh, gate onto this uh, two sides, horizontal bound. Then we can define a uh, local tensor on these two sides, just here. Um, this is the definition. Then the second step is to do a single value decomposition. Okay, that's the only thing. So single value decomposition is to then determine uh, we found a new horizontal vertical bound. Just a, it's a new spectral weight or entanglement defined on the other bound. Then the third step is to do the truncation to make this uh, use the bond dimension here in principle D square. But now we cut the bond back to the dimension, back to D. So that's the only thing we need to do. Okay, so this is uh, how do we uh, determine uh, these uh, local tensors with uh, uh, it's a simple update. So here, the, the, the picture is that we use always use bound vector as an effective field to mimic the environment contribution. So this is uh, the idea. And this method works uh, quite efficient just because the, the whole projection is done locally. Okay. Of course, this is just a local optimization approach. It is not considered the environment the contribution. Uh, another good thing is that to this kind of approach, uh, the truncation error will not accumulate. So at every step, it may not so accurate. But uh, we don't worry about that because uh, eventually you will converge. The better thing is that because this is a local approximation, so the non-range correlation is not included. So if you want to consider or you calculate any quantities which involving long-range correlations, this may, this approximation may not be that good. Okay. So for example, if we calculate the magnetization, this were method will always overestimate the value of the autocrat magnetization. Um, but the deviation is not that big, as you're saying. Do you consider how simple this method is? Now let's, uh, for example, just uh, apply this method to the, the simple update approach to uh, to Hessenberg model defined on Hussein lattice. Okay, this is a Hussein lattice. Okay, it's a very similar to Kagami lattice locally. It's have the same structure as locally as same structure as Kagami lattice. So this that is much more simpler than this one because there are no big loops, only only triangle. That's the only thing. Otherwise, that's not. Okay. Um, although this is simpler, but we think that that can be used to, to give us some information on this lattice. Because this is the lattice is nice frustrated. If the ground state on this lattice is a spin degree, or it's not an animal order, then we believe that it should be. This one should be also spinning. If this is uh, not spinning equate, we cannot say too much. If it's a um, magnetic order, we cannot say much to our own state. But uh, if it's really spinning equate, mm -hmm. then we can definitely know that there's no order there as well. Because uh, this is much, much <coughs> strongly frustrating. The good thing is that uh, this one, we can consider a uh, tree like pathway function. That's a trick, okay? No loops. And in this case, simple update can give us very accurate results. So that's a good idea. Go for study this, also in that 
Now I just show you the, uh, some kind of result. So the question is that uh, whether this uh, bronze state can be a spin difference. Okay. Um, so that's what I've already mentioned. If this is bronze state is really really uh, spin liquid, it's likely that this must be a spin liquid. So this is the idea. So that's why we can use uh, even simple update to gain some knowledge about a very complicated <coughs> problem. So I, now I show you the results. This um, is for similarities, uh, the bound dimension can be uh, in principle when it goes to 1000. But uh, here, I just show you more. This is a shares a power or dependence on bound dimension. Okay. So I, as I mentioned, this suggests that the system is like situation scatters. Because uh, this power of dependence is very uh, is an indication of gapless executions. Uh, well, of course, we can also calculate uh, the near uh, the auto parameter. This is a 120 degree uh, auto parameter, near order. Uh, it turns out uh, that any finite on the dimension, the ground state is near order. Only in the limit, one dimension goes to infinity, extra plate to zero. Okay, so this is a very tricky uh, system. At any finite dimension, you will find that the ground state is uh, altered, <coughs> and uh, there's a 120 degree near order. So it's, if we just count, just stop it at some finite bump dimension, you will always say the system is uh, magnetic states. But in the true ground state, in the limit bound dimension goes to infinity, <coughs> and we actually found that this uh, magnetic order branch. So this is a uh, uh, this is an indication so, that so sorry. So what is the definition of your order parameters? Your S I X is a this is a spin one half operator or? Yes, it is. This is this is a spin. Oh, sorry. This should be. Uh, uh, yeah, this is an airway uh, spin on each side, x direction, y direction. Oh, that is. That is a uh, because uh, you can have a gauge. Uh, have a gauge arbitrarily. So, but does the expect, expectation that it should shouldn't vanish? Uh, it's not vanish because of this order space. Yeah, but there. Uh, so, so, <coughs> on each side. side. On each uh, side. I, I need the 120 degree in one plaquette. It may constitute one plane spin. That's right. right. Here, this is the, for the, each side. For so given side, we do the average. Not the average of the whole lattice. The average the whole lattice, of course, is zero. Mm -hmm. okay. So this is, a, this is a local quantity. They have a 100 mm -hmm. degrees of uh, difference. Okay. Yeah. So it doesn't necessarily mean that the presence of spin on the number. Uh, it is magnetic order. Oh, uh, I mean dipole order. Dipole order. Uh, not dipole order. Not dipole order. It is not dipole order. <coughs> it is about 120 degree. We will check this very carefully. Mm -hmm. Because we didn't fix that, uh, for example, this is uh, really on the plan or just in the zigzag direction. So that's why it uh, just uh, calculates uh, quantities. So this also means that uh, this uh, the Kagome lattice must be a very complicated system. Because a uh, finite bond dimension, you may find that the ground space is ordered. Okay? But in the if the bond dimension goes to infinity, then that order or vanish. Okay. So this is um, actually a problem we feel very hard to, to really handle this because uh, in, in, the, in this uh, real Kagome lattice, of course there are loops and the bound dimension we cannot treat so big a bound dimension. Okay? Just actually we have only points there. Now how can we just uh, say, oh, Yes, again, formation on that. 
just from the kind of studies. Um, so now let me just uh, discuss about the Cartomina. For example, then apply this kind of things, see if we can put more constraint on Cartomina itself. And um, of course, the reason we want to study this Cartomina is just because we want to know whether this is a, if this system is a spin equation or not a spin equation. Right. So this is a, actually a, still an issue under debate. In literature, there are quite many different kinds of proposals for the ground state, the function of the ground state. And uh, in early days, I think most of the proposals are just claiming that it, the ground state is a very strong crystal, some kind of very strong crystal. These are a bit smaller uh, cluster size or larger cluster size. And Um, even now, I think there are still uh, some people still believe that maybe this is still the ground state. But uh, nowadays, um, I think the dominant uh, uh, groups um, believe that it is a spin liquid. But there's still a uh, difference between different groups. Some group uh, claim it's a Z2 gap to spin liquid. Some, uh, uh, you want gapless screen print. And here, again, I think here, uh, as the philosophers said, uh, the two screen print group. Um, we don't know yet whether which one is more favorable. Um, so we just try to, uh, we hope we can gain some uh, knowledge on this using the surprise wave function. Um, the, the, this problem is very difficult to study just because uh, there are no good approach, so I don't need to mention that. So this is, uh, many, many people try different kinds of approaches to study this problem. But uh, nowadays, I think numerically, and uh, I think the, 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 the benchmark, benchmark you know, many options by DMRG. So this is actually DMRG results. And this is ground damage. I just showed the ground damage. But you can still see there's a very big uh, uh, just a final size effect. Okay. Um, this is uh, different points with uh, different kind of uh, this is this uh, I think the energy is uh, too high. And this is uh, the result estimated by Stephen White. And it's Averages from the isolation of uh, the geometry package. This shows the result as a, a function of the inverse of, uh, of the cylinders. Okay, this uh, inverse uh, circumferences. So um, I don't know how they uh, maybe Yen can explain to us how they do this extrapolation. Yes, so this dash line is actually of those, those points. Right? Um, uh, um, question is, they have done that. I don't know in what function they used to All right, I understand. But anyway, this is, uh, this is just uh, those points, right? When they, they have to do the actual operation, so this is uh, a better. Um, so this is, uh, this is roughly the, the better, OK? It's uh, lower than the value obtained by uh, Stephen White and his coordinators. Now we see whether we can get a, a better result, or oh, get, get some convergent results used in pass wave function. So this is actually a, a broader spectrum uh, for the gross energy obtained by different kinds of groups. And for spin, gap spin equate, can, the energy can be there, 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 so many. All the gap is here and when it's on this case, can have a slightly higher energy. Then we tried to use uh, pass uh, to do the calculation. This is uh, uh, the calculation we did uh, before by uh, using just a uh, simple object to the function. Okay? Of course, this is the uh, energy, so uh, it should be higher than the flow rate. Uh, 
energy. So you can see very clearly it's still not converged yet. Okay. Uh, so, so we tried hard to make this to be uh, to go to a larger bound dimension. Um, but we still cannot see whether this is really converged. But it's just become uh, tends to converge. It may not really converge exponentially. You may keep this be some kind of algebraic. Okay? Um, unfortunately, it would matter for larger, they cannot do much, much larger on the dimension. So it's already, 25 is already quite a big number. But just from this, those data, we seems to feel that is more likely, the convergence is more likely to be algebraic rather than exponential. In this sense, we think it's more likely to be gapless, like the situation is more likely to be gapless. Yeah. Can you distinguish between the case of gapless and very small gap? We cannot. State? Yes, we cannot. Yes, so we, we, because in the case of Kaumer, so we, yeah. uh, we, we... If the gap is very small, then we cannot yeah. distinguish that. The only thing we can distinguish uh, is to increase this bump dimension to a larger bump. Now, if we say this is very long, then still logically can decay and converge. And the main rule of the if the gap is too small, then of course we cannot do it. But in literature, that gap is not that small. Yeah. yeah. It's 0.05 or something like that. I think this is value suggests that we cannot uh, say whether it's this is a proof, but it suggests that it must be less than that. So that's it. Although we don't know the value, but the thing is to suggest that it must be smaller than 0.05. Can you determine the upper bound of the gap? We tried that, but uh, unfortunately we haven't got any, any, any value for that. Just, uh, just say this is because B to uh, 25 is already quite big enough. Yeah, so, they are not seeing any kind of uh, exponential convergence. So, that's uh, an indication, but not necessary. That's uh, not a proof. So, this is actually, we tried very hard, and then eventually we found that this problem is even harder than we tried. So, that's the problem. Do you use rat unit step? Um, here, this is three sides. We also use a nine pass, okay? Uh, but unfortunately, for nine pass, we, we cannot do much here. We do not have a result of uh, above uh, above 15, I think. Uh, I do not have a data here, but uh, we do the calculation for nine pass. We even try the search for six, because that's one much better. But uh, unfortunately, this uh, only start in points there. So, not many, many um, um, so let's uh, also make a comparison with sort of assuming because the ground state energy and so they, they show very similar overall dependence. So in that sense we, we still cannot see the system or converge exponentially. If it's not converging exponential, uh, that definitely means that uh, it's uh, gapless. Of course, we, that's uh, unknown because we do not have points above where 25. And we can also calculate uh, magnetization. Because uh, the Kagome lattice, as I mentioned, is a uh, uh, is much more frustrated, then the magnetization should be surprised. This is indeed true. Okay. So magnetization is smaller than the corresponding Fusumi lattice. Uh, but uh, here, uh, no, we, we do not, uh, we, well, we only have a point up to, to, to 20, okay? So from here, we cannot say too much. Whether this will drop to zero faster than this one, or just uh, keep going in some algebra. So this is very tricky. So this is a problem. It's uh, too hard for us to, to give a very uh, concrete conclusion uh, at the moment. 
So we still uh, try to, to see whether we can find a way to solve this problem. Okay. Either by adding, for example, J2 term in and to enlarge this uh, uh, space, or, but introduce some other kind of uh, preservations to, to go away from this. Uh, I think this is a critical point, the J1, J2. And this could be just a critical point. So if we put more other infections, then we hope this problem can be partially solved. But we haven't uh, had enough uh, data to show here. Um, OK, then finally, I just uh, discuss uh, uh, another frustrated system, which is maybe interesting, also um, say whether we can learn something from perhaps this kind of tensor narrow calculations. Um, here I just uh, consider this by linear by quadratic Heisenberg model on particle matrix. This is a screen one, on this case. It's defined on particle matrix, not on the Kagome matrix. So the lattice itself is simpler than the Kagome, but Hamptonian's Hamptonian uh, is not that simple because it, just because it contains this term. Um, we choose Hamptonian because uh, on high complex is just because uh, that's one physical reason is that uh, the quantum fluctuation actually is stronger <coughs> in high complex than in square lattice. So we think that a high complex may give us some surprise. And so this is the this is the model we want to study. Let me first show you the classical phase diagram. So this is a classical phase diagram. This means that if we set this uh, spin operator as a classical operator, and have four phases. One is uh, there's a ferromagnetic phase if theta is in this region. Okay, from pi over two to uh, minus this, uh, three pi over four. And another one is this this phase is a uh, standard anti ferromagnetic near orbit phase. Uh, there are two other phases. One is this uh, ferro quotable audio stage here. Another one is an uh, anti ferro quotable audio phase here. Okay. So this is a classical uh, phase diagram. Then the question we ask uh, is that uh, whether the quantum frustration were modified in this phase diagram. And then we do the calculation with uh, tensor network states. Then this is ground standard. Uh, and also, this is, is ground standard the duality of a ground standard as a function of signal. Indeed, we found that there are four phases. One is this uh, uh, ferrocosical audio phase, and the near audio phase. This is actually a new phase. This is a ferromagnetic phase. And this actually is not the phase uh, predi predicted by uh, a classical calculation in the classical limit. This is actually a packet audio, uh, packet crystal states. Okay. Um, you can see actually um, the phase transition here because the duality there's a jump here. There's also a small jump here. And also jump here. So this is a three phase transition. There's another phase transition here, and I say this, because uh, that one is continuous. Um, interesting is that uh, just this phase transition, because from this phase to this phase, actually is uh, not a conventional normal type phase transition. It's corresponding to a visualization of uh, deconformed uh, visualization. Uh, so this is uh, this is actually the the the, 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 the surprise we found in this phase diagram. 
Um, of course, in order to say that this phase has this kind of structure, uh, we cannot just say this is just from energy and do this. Okay. So in order to determine what kind of phases it has, then we actually calculate the order parameters in this, in this region. Okay. So the, the magnetic order, the conventional magnetic order, okay, like the Fermi state, okay, is finite, okay. This is a staggered, uh, is a near order, okay, in the middle. And uh, it, this, this kind of order vanishes in these uh, two phases, okay. So the, the dipole order actually vanishes in these two regions, in this phase and in this phase. Uh, here, the critical point is not power four, it's actually close to 0.19. Okay. So, this is also the, uh, uh, the, the, the fair of causal order parameter, because in the Fermi state, it's also finite, but in, the, in this region, it's also finite. Okay. So, so, this is actually just this space. The anti causal pole order actually vanishes in the all uh, phase space. This is actually not uh, true in the classical limit. In the classical limit, it should be finite in this region, in this phase. But now, actually, quantum frustration actually uh, surprises this anti causal pole order. Then, of course, as I mentioned, this is a plug into order phase, but uh, at the beginning we don't really know what it is. Now we calculate this uh, order parameter, we eventually found that this actually the phase. So this is a P actually measure just there. This order P represents this order parameter. It, 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 it becomes finite when the theta goes away from this critical point. And it vanishes at the Critical point the drops. This is the first order free transition. And uh, here, uh, this one, this value is uh, close to one line. So this is a continuous free transition. Um, if it is really crit uh, critical, oh, continuous free transition, of course, this must be a decompound critical point. Uh, of course, in our calculation, uh, there are still, uh, because we it, it, it takes a very long time to, to get many, many points here. So there are left a small possibility that uh, there's a very tiny jump. If it's a tiny jump, then of course <coughs> it's no longer the confined critical point. Uh, but it, we believe we should be a uh, continuous transition. So in your, in your simulation, in your formulation, you impose the uh, uni uniform, the wave function, it has a translation values. Yes, yes, but we not cause the size. Yeah, I mean, the, if the grand state is a existing space of the two order parameters. Yes. Then, then the, your wave function can be square such a kind of. Uh, no, because uh, you mean exactly at the critical point. No, I mean, away the, from the, it. The, you can exclude the possibility of the first order phase transition. It's very difficult. Yes. This is actually a common problem that in all kinds of environmental simulations. In Mercado, in other countries. So. It's very difficult to secure the first of the pieces. Because if it's a tiny jump, or no jump, this is actually <laughs> the difference. But uh, I should uh, say that because uh, due to the numerical limitation, we cannot completely rule out the, the possibility to uh, uh, no jump. Uh, uh, Okay. But we believe it is. And, um, so this is a, the, the result we have obtained just uh, with this kind of uh, approach. Okay. Have you measured uh, critical indices? Uh, unfortunately, we, we don't. We uh, didn't. We didn't do that because uh, the result we obtained is still quite limited. Not mm -hmm. close enough to, I think it's close enough to <coughs> great point. So. There's still quite a here, you and you see that there's still uh, some gap here. In order to do that, then we need to go as close as possible to the critical point. 
Uh, the problem is actually the calculation becomes slower and slower if it goes to the critical point. This is very like the Macaulay have a critical slow. So, oh, okay. So that's a similar problem right here. So we need a much longer time to get a convergent result. Anyway, so I just uh, uh, give you a brief summary on what I talked about. I think uh, um, <clears throat> in, in, the, in, the, in the real study, we need to uh, consider in the study of our country in the United States, we need to consider what kind of function or presentation we should use uh, before we just uh, really do a calculation. If system has a very strong frustration, then you need to consider the many body entanglement their futures of the system. If it's just a purely just square lattice or bad path and lattice without frustration and all the injection is very simple, then perhaps it's a definitely a very good implementation. But if you have some frustration, it's better using a slightly generalized implementation of the kinds of narrow states. So pass is uh, is one of the options. You may can you can also design other kind of uh, tensor narrow states to make it more suitable to to model this study. And uh, also here I also discussed the simple update. Um, I think this is a a simple algorithm for determining the, the local tensors. Those kinds of uh, local tensors can be used as initial tensors in their fog date or in their uh, optimization calculations. Um, here I just also show you some preliminary results on Kagominatis. Uh, I think the problem is very difficult to, to give a very, uh, just come to, to draw a very uh, concrete conclusion. But uh, just from the result we have, it tends, it looks like it's more like a gapless system rather than a gap. Okay, so that's uh, what I talked about. Thank you very much for your attention. So have you measured the entanglement entropy? Uh, no, we haven't. Yes, the entanglement entropy is not that easy to calculate in the uh, in the in the past, uh, the presentation. Um, we can calculate it, for example, but uh, it's not that accurate. So just so we haven't done this. Also, very difficult to make a separation. Just a question. Generally, people say there's an uh, entanglement entropy if you have a uh, say two, you can lead to one. Uh, we need to spin it with the mental issue that's to the minus log 2. But that I value actually is very difficult to work in. There are observations in the memory. We try that, but we want to have a present from any result which is good for you. So it's a good for you. One question about this uh, last part of the combined yeah. phenomena. Mm -hmm. um, uh, I, I'm, actually, I wonder, uh, I mean, to how, how large I mean the uh, body index must be for detecting the previous order. I mean, uh, balance bond solid uh, ordering. I mean, on this side, P, P or P, uh, Yeah. I mean, uh, because here um, for this uh, particular. Uh, bigger, I think it's, uh, I forgot the number, eight or ten, something. Um, okay. Um, it's not yeah. that big. No. I see. Uh, I, I, I'm asking this because, uh, mm. I mean, symmetry breaking field, that is symmetry breaking field is uh, dangerously, only dangerously relevant uh, after right. the confined critical phenomenon. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, uh, if you do the Monte Carlo simulation, for example, mm -hmm. you have to go to very, very uh, large system size, you know, yes. to really detect the symmetry breaking. So, I mean, I, I'm just wondering... Uh, maybe Here, the, the, the similar, uh, we need a larger bond dimension. Uh -huh. The lattice is not from uh -huh. bond dimension. Is because of the lattice here, we assume... Yeah, of course, I know. The lattice yeah. is huge. Yeah, but some bond dimension is actually... Uh, 
But the six, you said the six or eight. Uh, I think it's eight. eight. Or maybe ten. Mm -hmm. So in order to just uh, to to go more closer to these points, a much more accurate calculation. But anyway, this uh, this uh, I think is a good candidate for for the for the for the confined phase. Unfortunately, the Monte Carlo has, uh, has the same problem here, so that's the uh, that makes the the tensor network calculation the only option here. So that's the problem. So we the hope other ones that can be used to check it, but. To, Right. For example, if you can apply the tensor renormalization type technique, I mean, in principle, you can directly obtain the information about the critical indices and the strain right. dimensions. Yeah. Right. Yes. Yeah. But then, uh, that's just uh, what I mean. We need a uh, uh, more careful calculation. Yes, more calculation. We haven't done this. In this calculation, what kind of optimization scheme? No, oh, this is just simple. Simple. So it, usually, I see that uh, in the vicinity of critical value, the, yes. the accuracy of the simple value is not so good. Okay. Okay. Our data should be much better. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Oh, sorry. This is a, a let's just say, it's a, it's a partial problem data. Okay. So because the problem data is not for the whole data, it's just a uh, just it could cluster of it. Okay. So it's, uh, it's uh, not, not, not purely just simple update. It's uh, just uh, because of this is in time with uh, SRG update. So update uh, not many steps. Mm -hmm. So the price uh, waste analysis of update. Okay, thank you again. All right, thank you.